Hey Floss Tube, it's Lori of Mischievous Stitches. I'm back this weekend to show you what I've been stitching on this week, uh, to show you a couple completed crochet whip baskets that I have made, and also to show you a couple things that I picked up while out junking. So let's get right on into it. I have continued to work on the Susan Rambo 1839 sampler. It's a reproduction sampler. And I just love everything about it. I'm just attached to her right now. I just want to keep on keeping on on the stitching on this piece. As you can see in that border, there are some very large, beautiful flowers. And they do repeat throughout the pattern. Um, but as you can see, you can go four, five, six uh, flowers before you have to repeat, which makes it very interesting and an easy border to stitch. Where a lot of samplers, when I stitch on them, it's a repeating border. And after a little bit, I kind of get bored of it, and I have to move around to keep my interest in the piece. And I'm not having that problem with this one, so let me show her to you. This is where I am at the moment. I've put in a couple more flowers since last week. I think I've completed this one. Completed this one, I think, since the last video. But I've finished this one and this one for sure. And I've dropped down and um, begun this flower, the potted plant or flower, as well as started this um, border. And that's going to have some names. And I have decided I'm going to mimic uh, Susan Rambo where she put her family names, her grand, it, it appears to me, the grandparents' names, the siblings, um, her, her name, and of course her parents. And I'm going to put those in there. So this will be the block that will hold my grandparents' names, both maternal and paternal. And right below this flower, I said it was a potted plant. It's not a potted plant. It is the, the cartouche where my name will be in my birth year. And so I'm enjoying this. I, like I said, I'm attached to her. I really don't want to put her down. I'm enjoying the stitching. So I think this evening I'll probably start this flower and get it outlined and move down into this. So I'll I will focus on this spot this evening. And I did get a little bit of stitching on my Blackbird Designs piece, um, the one that I'm going to put the military buttons in. But I left it in my bag in my car because I take that one to work and I work on that one on my lunch break. So I only actually got to work on it one day this week. Um, where it's still kind of crazy. It'll eventually slow down, but not right now. And... Um, couple of nights this week because it's just so mindless. I'm really enjoying the crochet. So once again, I've worked a couple, oops, that's the bottom side. I worked a couple more rows of the blue um, in this blanket that I'm working on. And I think this pattern was the cozy stripe blanket pattern. Um, and I still have a lot of ends to weave. I'll get to it. I try to do one or two is I complete a row. And a row actually consists of two rows. So there's two rows to complete this light blue and two for the dark. But I'll get to it. So I worked one night on this. And then I've made two, two more whip baskets. And there's this one. And it's actually, it doesn't look like it, but there are three different colors in there. Um, there's a variegated that has um, teal and blue and dark blue and navy blue. And then there's a, the uh, majority of the teal you see, there's a, a skein of that and a skein of the dark blue. So there's actually three different skeins in every one of these baskets. And this one just seemed to be a lot more matchy-matchy than normal. Um, and this one's already spoken for. I posted them on my Instagram last night and someone spoke up for this one. So this one will be sent out tomorrow. And... This is one, my favorite one, and I finished this one up yesterday. It's a little bit taller. The pattern actually calls for there to be 18 rows from the bottom to the bottom of the handles. And because I'm a beginner beginner crocheter, some of you said, you're not a beginner anymore. I consider myself a beginner. <laughs> but because I'm a beginner, and I really was unsure if I would have enough yarn um, when I get to almost the end of the, the skein, I would worry that I would run out. I wouldn't have enough to complete the bands or the rows. And so I was cutting myself off. 
short. So I was only doing 16 rows. This one actually has the, the 18 rows. So it's a little bit deeper than the ones that I had made for myself. And this is, of course, three different colors, and you can see some yellow. So the, there was a variegated skein of gray, white, a yellow, and the peach color. And then I have a peach color yarn and a gray in there as well. And I really like this one. I like how happy it is. But I have this one. And that's the only ones I've completed. But that's a lot for me. Um, it generally takes me about two days of, of crocheting. Uh, what I'll do is I'll complete the bottom. And then this edging here is done by something called the post, sti post stitch. And so I'll complete that and then the next night I might move up. So it's generally taking me about two nights, um, maybe a little bit on the third day, but I'm enjoying this. So I'll probably try to work on another one this week. And what else have I been up to? I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. So um, I was going to tell you about the junkin'. Clint and I went out for lunch yesterday, and there was this place on the side of the road that said that they had a, an estate sale. And it's a place that it looks to me, I, I, I don't know a lot about it, but I assume that it's a, a group that goes in and they, an estate sale is held and they go in after the fact and say we'll take everything else for this cost. And then they bring it back to their little shop and they put it on tables outside of the place. And there were probably four lunchroom sized tables full of totes, plastic totes or boxes full of things. And we pull in and, and you know, there's lots of people there and they're looking through these baskets, these bins, these, all these things. And someone comes out and said, everything in there is a dollar an item. And I'm looking through and there's this huge tote and it's full of cross stitch patterns, magazines, hundreds hundreds and I'm not gonna pay a hundred dollars a hundred dollars I'm not gonna pay a dollar per magazine um, I did not bring it home before you get excited I didn't bring it home and because when I looked through it it was mainly leaflets from and magazines from the late 70s early 80s there was even a folder a three ring binder that the lady who had this and I'm assuming it's a lady the lady who had it had photocopied patterns from somewhere and put them in sleeves inside this three ring, ring binder so there were handwritten patterns so the patterns to us now would be kind of dated and when I fingered through I, it was mostly alphabets and the tiny little motifs um, booklets there was a couple Paula Vons but I was looking for the prairie schoolers and those kind of things and it wasn't it was some of the better homes and gardens I've got a few here but the, the older magazines, and um, we're hoping if they're there, still there next weekend and we can get that price down or negotiate with them, we may bring it home and then I might go through it piece by piece, but um, at a dollar an item, it wasn't worth it to me. What I did find is this, obviously, this lady was a crafter just like me, just like many of you. But there were no knitting needles, but there was yarn. And there were cro the cross-stitch patterns, but no fabrics. There were no hoops, um, no needles. There were a few buttons, but they were just still on the cards, and it wasn't like a big jar full of buttons like I have here. So she was a crafter, but at the time we got there, I'm pretty sure that someone else had popped in and picked up those things. Um, she also crocheted. And I say that because there was one thing I did pick up, and I've already brought it home and washed it. I got this for a dollar. One measly dollar. It is not finished. And I say that because this edge is scalloped. And of course, none of the other edges are. And also her tails were left. Do you see the beauty in this? One dollar. One. So I came home last night and I heard Michelle Strike Rose talk on one of her videos how she 
washes the hers um, if the yarn is stiff with fabric soft, softener several times and that's what I did last night. Um, it's kind of freaky to me to have a blanket that belonged to someone that they might have used, um, might or might not. I assume she didn't because it was the tails were not tucked in, but um, I just needed to wash it. <laughs> I'm going to leave it at that. I just needed to wash it. So I washed it and it smells really good, but I used plenty of fabric softener to um, soften it up. And there wasn't a bad smell on it. You know, sometimes when you go into thrifting stores like Good Goodwill, it's not somewhere I freak, frequent because when I go in there, the smell of hundreds of people's homes overpowers me. It's, it's not something that I'm able to tolerate. Um, and it may be more mental than it is actually the scent of the smell, um, but I don't stay in there long when I go in. Now the musky dustiness of a thrift shop, I can handle. Isn't that weird? But anyway, so I picked this up for a dollar, and she's going to be right in here. <coughs> Excuse me. I also um, found an old quilt stand, a wooden quilt stand. Um, I may go back this weekend and pick it up. It's just a wooden one. It's it's not very thick. It's, it's um, small and spindly. But I have a couple of gifted quilts here. And one of them I have hanging up over there. But I have one that is not hanging. And then this. And I want to put them on that stand. And I'll probably actually put them in my bedroom and not up here. So I'm looking forward to that. And in with her cross stitch, I did find one magazine that I brought home. And it was Best Ever Afghans. It's crochet. <laughs> And this is from 2011, so it's pretty recent. And that's from saying she had this. Maybe she quit cross-stitching cross at some point because she couldn't see. But kind of like me, as I'll get older, my eyesight diminishes a little bit. Um, and maybe she picked up crochet cause, because it was easier. I don't know. But there were no yarns. She had this beautiful crochet blanket, which means that she had skills, but no yarn. And this is the only crochet um, pattern book that I saw. But no needles, no hooks, no hooks. But there's beautiful patterns in here. Um, I do not have the skills for these, or maybe I do. Maybe I'm selling myself short. But I, I'm still intimidated by the patterns for the actual um, Afghan steel. But I love this one. How delicate this is and it shows it as a baby quilt those little daisies love that and then there's this look at that stitch work on that that intimidates me now what would I do with it I don't know but I'd like to do it and there was one other that was just wild and Bohemian. Oh, here's another one with daisies on a larger bit. I really like that. I saw a crochet quilt, hand crochet quilt today that was on the smaller yarn like this. It did not have daisies, but it was along the same lines, but it was with a taupey off-white color. It was priced like it should have been. It was $165, and I loved it. I would have loved to have brought that one home and put it on my, my bed in my bedroom, but wasn't meant to be. Um, I'm looking for one more and then I'm going to put this back down. Now, this is not typically me, but I love this. I love everything about it. It's granny squarish, the colors, the different type of stitching. What do you call that? Bohemian? A gypsy quilt? I don't know, but I really like it. I like it a lot. So one day, when I gather more skills, I'm going to go for it. Probably a granny squilt. squilt. <laughs> a granny square quilt first, but um, I really do like this a lot. So I'm thankful to have this, and it's full. It's 55 different Afghan so patterns, so this is was a good find. And I picked this book up, and 
I don't know if any of you know about this. It's a magazine, not a book. This is the second time I bought this, and I just love this for people like me out there that y'all love to go thrifting or junking and that kind of thing and bring it into your home. The people that um, this magazine, um, it's different families with their own different styles, and it's the things that they've picked up at these thrift shops and junk shops and brought into their home to make them their homes their own. And... It's just the ideas of what people do with these things, and they just fall in love. Um, this this is a lawyer. This is this is a guy who he says um, more is better than who. The old saying less is more. He said he doesn't agree with this. So these are just pictures, and this looks like uh, basic training graduation pictures and those kind of things. That this is his display wall. This is just one of the many pictures, and it's. I just really enjoyed looking through this. Um, let me see if I can get another. This is another house. And these people actually own a thrift shop. But look at this. So if you enjoy junking like me and love incorporating it into your home and are finding your own style or have already found your style and you're interested and being inspired by others who do the same thing, you may want to pick this up. I've picked one, um, my first one up at Walmart, and I picked this one up from Joanne. So just know they have them if you're interested in the magazine. Other than that, it's just a quick video. I'm going to continue to work on Susan Rambo um, this week. And, uh, oh, I did forget something. I did forget something. I told y'all I went to a concert, was going to a concert this weekend, and I did. Friday night, uh, Clint and I went to an Aaron Lewis concert, and at one time he was the lead singer for a group back in my, from my early 20s, which was Stained, um, and we just love him. This is the second concert we've seen of his since he's become a country singer. And it's what is referred to, for those that don't listen to country music, as an outlaw, a country outlaw, is the, the actual what category he would fall under. Um, so anyway, so we went to this newly reopened, within the past year, year and a half, theater here in um, the local city. And it was the first time we had been there, and it was amazing. So this theater was at one time a movie theater, and it was a theater that my mother, um, she tells me these stories. I'll tell you, the city is Augusta, Georgia, and my mother would ride the train, a trolley, that would go from our city to Augusta, and she said they'd pay so much to ride this trolley, and they would get off and spend the whole day and walk the street there in Augusta and window shop and um, those kind of things, and I've, I've heard my grandmother and my mother and my, my aunts on both sides um, talk about those trolley rides in those days, so when my mother was a teenager, that theater was a movie theater, so when I got there that evening, while the lights were still up and people were just beginning to file in, I'm taking pictures of everything around me, and I'm messaging them to my mom. And she's just, you know, once again, just sharing how it's bring, it brought back lots of memories. And now she wants to see it herself. But it took years. This theater has been closed for many years. And it took people working together to have this theater renovated. And it has become a hot spot now for people coming into the city to do, you know, it's a small venue but to do concerts and things. And because it's newly renovated and it's so nice, um, it's attracting a lot of people there. So um, concert was great. Really enjoyed it. I think we got home. I have not, I cannot remember the last time I got home at 2 o'clock in the morning. I slept in yesterday, and I never do that. <laughs> I'm usually up 6, 37 in the morning. I'm up. I, it wore me out. <laughs> Stay out till 2 o'clock in the morning. I told my husband I, that, you know, I guess I'm showing my age. I just that there was a time that I could stay out till 2, 3, 4 in the morning and get up in the morning and 
you know, go to my classes, but it's not anymore. Not anymore. So anyway, back to this coming week. I'm going to continue to work on Susan Rambo. I'm probably going to stitch maybe one more whip, whip basket and see what else I can get into. Clint and I have another possible concert we're going to go to this weekend somewhere and um, probably do some more junking. And that's about it. So until next weekend, I hope everyone has a great stitch field week. I hope you have a smile on your face as well as in your heart. And I will see you all soon. Bye-bye.